how to bring to life a product that's been around for 50 years. The culture is reminiscing on an everyday basis. YouTube is just got nostalgia at its core. I mean, how many times have you gone there to go find an old commercial or an old TV show or, or something that just reminds you of the past? It's kind of this hub for memory. When the ad can evoke a memory of something or someone, the consumer is not only more likely to buy it, they're more likely to pay a little more for it. That's a premium creative lever. Where it all came together was on a corporate PR channel, a little over two minutes long. Didn't have a ton of views, but it seemed like people liked it. With a little bit of post-production work, we turned it into a 90 second spot that people could not get enough of. It really challenged our perceptions of what an awareness versus consideration versus conversion video looked like. People were so engaged. They went out of their way, not just to go to the site, but click that tiny, tiny little button in the corner to see where the story was ending up and what it was about. And that has really opened the doors for us to run all sorts of media. What was even more interesting is that Gen Z was the top performing audience, despite this ad being squarely aimed at a 35 plus consumer. There was something happening with the way that he was so generously inviting us into his memory. He's really enjoying his memory as much as we're enjoying listening to it. And those two things coming together, that sincerity is really powerful and lovely. There's an adage to say, in order to understand the present, you have to know about the past. So if you don't know about your past, you can get lost. Clyde was uh, from the movie, Bonnie and Clyde. This guy was a bank robber. So they equated that to my stealing the ball on the court. I used to make a lot of steals. Culture is continuous for a generation where all culture is available on YouTube. And so if I see an ad for Walt Frazier, I can go on YouTube and watch highlights of him playing today and his style and him showing up at nightclubs. And it's, it's all there for me. It's not lost. Like all that style is available to me and all that taste. And it isn't captive and hidden in a specific era that needs to be evoked. So this idea of nostalgia, nostalgia's now and it's continuous. The shoe has been timeless. You know, I always tell people long before the Air Jordan, that was the Clyde. That sense of history actually helped us connect the message with this younger audience. Nostalgia isn't necessarily about connecting through a story you recognize, it's a vibe. I loved seeing that nostalgia's ageless that I don't have to have lived through a decade or have memories of a decade in order to fall in love with hints and moods from that space. It's a welcome escape and the audience rewards that escape with their attention. Like we ran this study here and found that nostalgia works really well for our brand. You know, our brand is very historic. It's been around since 1948. It has a rich history in sports and, and fashion and culture. So nostalgia works extremely well for us. Uh, but for another brand, it might be a different type of emotion. It might be humor, it might be FOMO or, or something else. We want to focus on nostalgia and use it when it makes sense, but we obviously have products and, and campaigns that probably don't work with nostalgia, and that's what we have to like, lean to other things. A classic product can be used to evoke nostalgia, and that message can be incredibly compelling. But we need both the style and the story. It's not enough to put a retro finish on a story that doesn't have the foundation of nostalgia underneath it. Make something better.